to the House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I call you Zinni Mr. Saints. Speaker, Kanaka, Mr. Speaker, thank you. Green Party is pleased to support the um, land transfer bill. And as the Chair of the Select Committee, um, Honourable Ruth Dyson, has noted, it's been a long time in coming. It was back in July 2010 that the Law Commission did a very thorough report about a new land transfer act, and yet it's taken uh, all this time to actually get the legislation uh, into the House. That said, we're pleased to support it because it has gone through a good process in terms of the Law Commission review and quite substantial um, consultation and because it is taking uh, legislation that was 60 years old and updating that uh, for the modern era, particularly given the electronic basis for uh, the land register at the present time, and the fact that the uh, legislation, the current Act, is quite clumsy to uh, administer, and so it has been a process of modernisation. And in that process, we have, of course, retained the key principles at the core of our Torrens system, the indefeasibility of title, so that land transactions can't be uh, made mud, null and void, they can't be set aside unless there's been some fraudulent activity in gaining the title, and that it is a register of all uh, interests uh, in land and titles that people can have confidence in and be secure that when they are doing a land transaction, they can go to the register and find all of the information uh, there rather than having to um, search uh, in other places. And it does provide that security of ownership. Um, Mr Speaker, there were changes made in terms of the uh, High Court's ability to and discretion to intervene in cases of obvious injustice. Uh, and the ability to provide compensation. But there is one huge hole in this legislation, and that is around the issue of overseas ownership. Um, Dennis O'Rourke, with his supplementary order paper, proposed a significant change that would at least have a regist or the register expanded to list um, transactions where there is an overseas person which he ends up owning the land. And that was a uh, supplementary order paper that the Green Party supported. Because what we're seeing, uh, Mr Speaker, in New Zealand is a significant increase in overseas ownership of land, and we actually end up relying on a community organisation, the Campaign Against Foreign Control of Aotearoa, for the best statistics on the alienation of New Zealand land. We've had a sharp increase in the proportion of shares listed uh, on our share market from 33 per cent of listed shares in 2015 to 36 per cent uh, last year being overseas owned. And we've had a significant increase in the amount of land which is overseas owned. Um, in 2015, the Overseas Investment Office approved overseas investors buying nearly 80,000 hectares of land. Yet in 2016, last year, the Overseas Investment Office approved the acquisition of 465, 863,000 hectares of rural land by overseas investors. And the bulk of that was freehold land, um, but some of it, about 100,000 hectares, was leasehold land. The bulk of those transactions were one overseas investor selling to another. So once land has been alienated, once those high prices have been paid for farmland, it is very difficult uh, for New Zealanders to buy them back. That 2016 figure of 400, nearly 466,000 hectares was just one year of land sales, and that was 2.9 per cent. Member, <coughs> I'll just remind the member, we're on a third reading, and a third reading is the, um, the result of what transpired and the report back from the, select, from the Committee of the Whole. And I'll just refer the member to Speaker's ruling 137, one in particular, and I'll ask you to come back to mention uh, these other points is fine, but you must come back and not make what your comments are the substantive part of the speech. So, is any sage? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, I would comment, Mr. Speaker, that about a third of the text of the bill is um, I mean, consequential amendments. One of the acts that is amended by um, this bill is the Crown Pastoral Lands Act. And we have seen just recently Mount White, our second largest Crown Pastoral lease administered under the Crown Pastoral Land Act, 
which is unlikely to be able to be purchased by a New Zealand farmer in the same way that Jericho Station wasn't, and is potentially, because it's been promoted aggressively overseas, to be bought by an overseas investor. So this bill amends the Crown Pastoral Lands Act, but it provides no protection in that act for our Crown Pastoral leases, our magnificent high country stations being alienated overseas. So it is this major gap in the bill which the Green Party, while supporting the rest of it around um, the Torrens system, around indefeasibility of title, around the modernisation, thinks this bill should have addressed. Because otherwise we will see an increasing proportion of land in New Zealand alienated overseas. And unlike countries like Switzerland, Canada, the United States, Argentina, Thailand, Japan and Ireland, we don't have strong controls on overseas ownership. So, Mr Speaker, we are supporting this bill, but there is a big gap which the Green Party and Government would remedy by much tighter controls on overseas land ownership. Mr Speaker. Um, I call Dennis O'Rourke. Mr Speaker, New Zealand first.